Channel 20 people. It's great to see you this morning. We're coming to you from WYVE in Whitfield, Virginia. We are celebrating 70 years on air. And it's fun to extend the birthday celebration to television land on Channel 20 for Citizens. So thank you, Citizens, for coming out. And hello, all you Channel 20 viewers out there. I'm Tom Moore. I do some on-air things and some silly things from time to time, so I'm told. And I'm sitting with Craig Allison, who was with the station for 35 years and is still on every Saturday morning doing bluegrass shows. So um, we're, we're just having a good time, aren't we, Craig? Absolutely. It's a, we always had a good time on WYVE. I was here for 35 years, starting in 1957, officially. 1957. Yeah, that was a year way before you were born way before or after or before before yeah yeah well that was uh elvis was coming along soon after those days Who? yeah yeah I the remember. king that's what he's that's, called that yeah. i remember him yeah. yeah oh yeah definitely and that back in those days of course wyde had different formats because radio back in those days would be like country for a while it'd be uh, rock and roll it might be uh big band music, Frank right. Sinatra, what have you, exactly. and you'd, you'd have them on different, and you described that, about how that would happen. It's during called a, block programming, mm -hmm. and uh, that's the way I started out, and uh, uh, usually the morning uh, program was done by a guy named Jack Fleming, uh, who was our chief engineer, and uh, Jack would sign on in the morning with the uh, wake up music and his foolishness, <laughs> and uh, carry it till uh, about nine o'clock and then we'd have we had some preachers 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 to come on i declare and and, and bless us all <laughs> and uh, we needed some of those this morning <laughs> we did yes <laughs> to bless the cake and, and we do in memoriam you mm -hmm. know and then the the next announcer would come on usually fox uh frank fox linda mood okay. foxy foxy would come on and uh he, he did a program called uh, Listen Ladies. Listen Ladies? Yes. Excluding the men. Well, it was for the, the, the housewives at home. Gotcha. And well, it didn't start out Listen Ladies. He uh, started out calling it Ladies Lounge yes, until he went up to the oops. bus station and saw Ladies Lounge on the yes, restroom. And say. so he changed it to Listen Ladies. Listen Ladies. Yes. Well, it's interesting. The history of the station, and you were here for so much of it, so much history. <laughs> you're, yeah, we're you're right. an historian. Hey, well, I remember back that first ice age. But you remember some of the milestones, and you talked about this before, but there have been some firsts for this station that, right. that were firsts for every radio station in Virginia. Exactly. Um, back in the day, we, we got our news off of, uh, off of the teletype. Yeah. And uh, it just typed out the, the news. And uh, we, we called it Rip and Read. We'd rip the page off and have the newscast and read it live. And uh, we were with uh, United Press, and then it, it uh, merged with International News and okay. became United Press International. UPI. UPI. And uh, Art, Arthur Gates, who started the station back in 1949, uh, came from Patrick County, Virginia, over to Withfield, and citizens people know Patrick County very well. And, uh, yeah, and uh, and they uh, there's a guy by the name of Ralph Epperson who started the radio station in Mount Airy, and he and Art Gates grew up together, and uh, uh, the Epperson family helped WIVE get on the air in 1949. Okay. But anyway, uh, getting back to the news machine, uh, we would do the rip and read thing. And Art Gates, who, uh, who was our, our uh, owner and general manager, knew a lot of people in broadcasting. He, he'd been on the Virginia Association of Broadcasters for years, and he also was on the national uh, okay. uh, broadcast. Uh, big time. Yeah, big time. Anyhow, he knew people. And so uh, UPI had a telephone line that uh, we, we were connected to. They would send down these little blurbs of, of news, like 30 seconds of a some guy in New York doing a, a news story, right. or maybe a guy doing a wraparound with opening and, and then 
have a comment from the President of the United States in closing, maybe mm -hmm. 45 seconds. Long before local news, really. Yes. And uh, so Art said, hey, I know the guy up in New York. Now, why they have these people already hired doing this audio. Why don't you just put a newscast together at the top of the hour? And so we called up his friend in New York, and they said, well, I, this might be a good idea. Do you think anybody would buy it? <laughs> and Art said, I'll get back to you. And he checked with all the radio stations in the area because he knew everybody. And they said, heck, yes, we would buy it, but, mm. but don't put spots in it from New York. Like, don't put a General right. Motors spot in there because so, we want to go sell it to the local General Motors dealer. And so uh, UPI agreed just buy the newscast okay. and go sell it locally. And WYVE got uh, contract number one in the nation about for that? the new UPI newscast. Well, I love that because being in Southwest Virginia where we are and celebrating 70 years, uh, people have an impression of Southwest Virginia, what goes on. But, you know, what is it? Uh, necessity is the mother of invention. And things like things happen this like this uh, in these beautiful mountains where we live that would surprise people. Well, uh, to, to further that, uh, WYVE was the first station, a radio station in the state of Virginia to get the satellite dish when UPI started broadcasting their newscasts off satellite. There you go. So, and we go from radio to television and it right. all kind of, it all blends in together and of course Citizens helps us out with our sister station, WXBX, and That's great. we have some music playing, and they've got the local high school football. We broadcast local high school football live ourselves, so we kind of all work together. But Craig Allison has been a part of every moment of this station's history and continues t to be so. And uh, thanks, for, thanks for putting up with us and hanging around so long. Hey. You can't run me off. <laughs> there you go. I've been here too long. But, um, but you know, talking about this old machine here, uh, a lot of history came through that. I remember uh, the, uh, the alert bulletin, president has been shot. Yeah. I remember, uh, in fact, when President Kennedy was assassinated, the nation had three days of mourning. Now, what does a little one-horse radio station here in the mountains of Southwest Virginia do for three days of mourning. We can't play uh, church music for three days. So Art Gates, again, our boss, knew someone with NBC in New York, and he called the guy and explained our problem. And the guy said, well, the the, the NBC network runs through the tele the uh, telephone company right next door to the radio station in Withville, why don't you just hook on to the network and uh, we'll allow you to do that for nothing for the three days. And so WYBE became an NBC affiliate for three days during uh, those days of mourning for the president. And I don't know what the other stations around us did, but uh, we felt very fortunate we were able to do that. Well, that's the kind of thing that the station, like I said, out of necessity and uh, thinking on the spot, uh, well, had, like, had to do. Uh, for example, uh, Hurricane Hugo came through this area, right up through southwest Virginia. And we knew it was coming because we had, uh, we had plenty of advance notice, but still we were worried, it'll knock out the power, we won't be on the air, how can we get the word out to people? For some reason, I guess God was looking for over us. The radio station stayed on the air the entire time the hurricane came through. Other radio stations in the area, power went off and they were not on the air. We became the go-to station for news about Hugo. And the Sheriff's Department here in Wythe County sent a deputy over to the radio station with a portable radio and she kept in contact with dispatch and kept the people on, listening on the air up to date as to what was going on, where uh, emergency uh, resources were needed and so forth. And so we were a, 
a, a real service to the public at that time. Well, that service is what it's all about. We're trying to do the best we can to serve our listeners and things like that. But, um, Craig, it was really great talking to you. I'm glad the folks on Channel 20 got to see what you actually look like. Uh, well, <laughs> I don't know if that's... I hope they're not disappointed. Uh, well, I'm not disappointed. I hope they are. <laughs> well, a lot of fun talking to you, Craig. Well, thank as you. Art Gates would always say when he closed out his program of Just Plain Talk, it was so long, and may God bless us all. There you go. So thanks for watching, folks. Happy Channel 20 to you guys out there and citizens. Thank you so much.